I don't think Trump understands that he's being laughed at. Now, this is not to suggest that Rogan carried out this interview in a masterful way. In many ways, it was sycophantic and brown nosing with almost no pushback whatsoever. But at this moment, you can see on Rogan's face that he's thinking, man, this dude is completely incoherent. Joe Rogan recently hosted a long three hour interview with Donald Trump, where they discussed a wide range of issues in a relaxed, open format. David Pakman didn't hold back on his show, breaking down the interview and sharing his take on some of the most memorable moments. In this video, we'll look at clips from the Rogan Trump conversation along with Pakman's analysis, and I'll add my thoughts along the way. Rogan asks Trump, explain to me, how is it that you won 2020? What's the evidence? And Trump goes, well, you know, I won. I lost by no, I didn't lose at all. And Rogan just laughs. And this is the start of maybe one of the more interesting exchanges of this interview. I want to I want to talk about 2020 because you said over and over that you were robbed in 2020. Yeah, totally. What how do you think you were robbed? Everybody yeah. always cuts you off. I'm going to allow. Do. Well, they not only cut you off. Well, what I'd rather do is we'll do it another time. And I would bring in papers that you would not believe. So, so first, it's always the reference to something he can't provide today. Papers are going to come in. He's going to give us a health care plan in two weeks. He's going to bring in papers that would knock your socks off. So many different papers. That election was so crooked. It was the most crooked election. Okay, but give me some examples of how. Well, let's start. Let's start okay. from the top and the easy ones. Okay. They were supposed to get legislative approval to do the things they did, and they didn't get it. In many cases, they didn't get it. What things? Anything. Legislative they made, approval like of for extensions of the voting for for for. Voting. Okay, now Trump is lying here. What Trump is referring to is that there are states whose constitutions say to change voting rules, you need to go through the legislature. However, what they also say is that in the case of a public health emergency, you don't need to do that. And so there were states that didn't go through the legislature to say, hey, we're going to do more mail in voting or more early voting because there is a state of public health emergency right now. You might not like that. It's sort of like when they say the Springfield, Ohio migrants are here illegally and you tell them, no, they're here legally with something called temporary protected status. And they go, well, they shouldn't be here. That shouldn't be the case. OK, well, change that. But it is the case. It is the case that you don't need to go through the state legislature when you are in the middle of a public health emergency. But there's another layer to it. It's not only not against the law, even if it's true that the rules were wrongly changed, just because they were changed doesn't mean it helps Biden over Trump. You might have a rule where it's like, oh, all of a sudden you can vote early. Oh, OK, I don't like how it was done. Well, now Trump supporters and Biden supporters can vote early. You then have to prove not only was it done illegally, but it was it was the effect of it helped one candidate over another. David Pakman raises an interesting point here about Donald Trump's claim of having all these papers to back up his statements. If Trump planned to discuss this topic on Joe Rogan's show, you'd think he'd bring those documents with him, right? Given how often he references them, it's almost surprising he doesn't carry them to every interview. Pakman suggests that maybe these documents don't actually exist and Trump's statements may not be entirely accurate. Let me know what you think about this. Do you agree with Pacman's take, or do you have a different perspective? By law, they had to get legislative approvals. You don't have to go any further than that. If you take a look at Wisconsin, uh, they virtually admitted that the election was rigged, robbed, and stolen. They did not the ballots because the ballots weren't signed they weren't originals they were we could go into this stuff we could go into the ballots or we could go into the overall i'll give you another one are you gonna present well, this well, let me, ever uh like what do you do you think like let me a, just give you one okay, more go ahead. before 51 intelligence agents come up that the laptop was from russia it turned out to be totally false. 51 former there. intelligence agents, right? They say that made, I don't believe it's this much, but it doesn't have to. I won by like, I lost by like, uh, I didn't lose, but they say I lost. <laughs> That's the funniest line. If you're enjoying this content, please give this video a like. It really helps me out a ton. I won by, I lost by, 
I didn't actually lose. And now Rogan's laughing and Rogan understands this is all complete nonsense. Joe, they say I lost by 22,000 votes. That's like one tenth of one percent less than that. It's a Trump almost seems to be saying that if you only lose by a little, it's sort of like winning and you should just be given the presidency. Tiny little thing. Twenty two thousand votes spread over the that's spread over this this period. So fifty one intelligence agents lied. They lied. They lied. They knew it was. It was Hunter's. It was from his bed. It was Hunter's laptop. They said it was created by Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. It was the Russia. And of course, as we know, the reason that the Hunter Biden story was not allowed on some social media platforms, on some it was, but on some it wasn't, uh, is because it contained explicit sexual images of Hunter that were being published without his consent. And this is not only a crime in many states, it also goes against the terms of service of the platform then known as Twitter. So this this was maybe Trump's worst area when it came to substance. But now I want to go to the very obvious cognitive deficits that Trump uh, um, projected during his interview with Rogan. Trump's recent three hour interview on Joe Rogan's podcast was certainly an interesting one, especially with his familiar claims about the 2020 election and the tight vote margins. During the conversation, Trump revisited past frustrations, bringing up vote counts and allegations he's often repeated. David Pakman has weighed in on the interview as well, calling attention to Trump's repeated insistence on certain claims, despite the lack of new evidence to support them. Pakman often critiques these familiar talking points as part of a larger strategy to keep his base engaged, though for some, it may feel like rehashing old grievances. What do you think of Trump's latest interview with Rogan and Pacman's take on it? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and if you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like and subscribe.